It's 25th of September, the last Monday uh, of September, possibly the last Monday of summer, who can tell? And it's a sunny day and we're just doing an orchard walk. Uh, we've just been looking at the sunset apples, we've picked these over and left the smaller apples on the tree which have grown up and got a little bit bigger, a little bit better coloured and we're going to pick the rest of those today. Orchard walks are very important, uh, it's to do with just walking around without a tool in your hand except perhaps a notebook and making some decisions, um, you know, what problems what needs to be done next. And um, uh, yeah, we had a moderately good day at Winchester Farmers Market yesterday. This coming weekend, we have got three markets between us. On Saturday, Julie will be going to Ferrum. I'll be going to um, um, Harvest uh, Festival thing at Winchester Cathedral. And on Sunday, we'll both be at that place. And we're just having a look at things. And this is um, Winter King. This is one of the uh, apple varieties that I most highly recommend. If you want to buy some and it's, um, you know, it's a strong recommend for a late apple, um, you probably have to ask for Winston. This was originally called Winter King and um, the name was changed to honour the uh, British World War II leader Sir Winston Churchill uh, and whilst you're not having any disrespect for the great man, um, we like the original name, so we uh, grow and market this apple as Winter King. What do you think about this particular variety, Julia, which obviously we have not picked yet, even though it's late September? It, it's a good variety. It blossoms very late, so it tends to miss the frost in the spring. But it is also very self-fertile, so the fact that it's blossoming late and all the others are finished doesn't seem to matter. But because it's so self-fertile, we have to thin the fruit quite a lot, don't we? We've, we've cut off a lot of the fruit. And I'm just looking at how the branches have been dragged down, even after some very strict fruit thinning on our side. We have had some problems with this apple. Oh goodness, there's none we haven't, there's, a, there's not, not an apple with no problems with. On the young trees it can be prone to bit a bit, but that seems to have stabilised. Now the trees are more mature, we don't seem to get that so much. Yeah. And we've also had years where it misses, but I think that's just due to the immaturity of the trees. I think overall I would have very recommended it. And it's a very late, it's staying on the tree nice and long. Yeah. Pretty well finished, picking all of our main crops up. Yeah. And these are still hanging on the tree nice and long. So we're keeping an eye on these. We'll start picking these when they just begin to fall. And then these will store. Well, our customers like eating these about November when they're still crisp, don't they? But. Yeah, it's not, like these about January, it's not coming January. off at a touch, is it? You can always separate it from the tree. I just, yeah, I've got I separated with that undue difficulty. Mm. Uh, let's try another. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's coming off with that undue difficulty, but it's not coming off at a touch. And I can't see any... Yeah, I can't see any on the ground. I mean, it's probably some under here. But, yeah. So, uh, we thinned these out, didn't we? Because these trees are growing so vigorously at the top end. Uh, of the um, orchard, of, of this line, they were growing into each other. And it's an interesting story about this particular one, how we started growing it, isn't there? Because um, when we first, our first planting back in 1992, we had hardly tasted any of these apples at all. So we just read every book we could get. This is before the internet, um, at least a long time before I had access to the internet, and there wasn't much up there, there still isn't that much. And, um, Interestingly, note how these are... Um, Look at how these are growing so poorly. Yeah, the soil's thinner and the, the wind whips through here, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But we planted five winter kings. It sounded like a good idea from the books we read. But our customers loved it, didn't they? In the tasting, people say, oh, this is all right. This is all right. Oh, this is great. Got some more of these. So we, we wanted to plant another 30 uh, of these. We couldn't get 30. There probably were not 30 in the country. So what we did, we planted out a row of rootstocks, and then I, I cleft grafted the rootstocks in situ, and I'm proud to say that all 33 of them took. So these were grafted, every one of these trees I grafted, where they stand. And they caught up very quickly with the other trees in the orchard, which isn't amazing very much. Oh yeah. So Winter King, uh, uh, Winston, W-I-N-S-T-O-N, if you want to ask for it. Um, it's a good late keeping apple. So it's saw fly damage on that, not a big problem really on this that occasion. So yeah, this is a, a good tree, isn't it? Yeah, growing next to it is the uh, um, 
Egremont Russet. Which we picked over. We obviously, obviously left a few. Was that deliberate? Uh, yes, these were the first ones we picked over. We picked off the biggest and ripest and left what were then very small, yeah. undeveloped fruits. But these have carried on ripening in the same way that the sun set. We, we do this, don't we? When we go, like the second crop on the tree this year. Mm, well, it isn't the same crop, but it's just uh, we, um, you know, if you, if you pick things over right early on, when they begin to be first ripe for picking, if you leave a few behind, sometimes they will swell a little bit, won't they? Or indeed colour up. And particularly this year, where we've had regular rain, not heavy rain, but yeah. we've had some new rain, and it's swelled those remaining fruits, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's have a just quick walk through here while we're doing this orchard walk. Having a look at everything, making notes to inform our uh, making the best use of the limited time. Time, the ultimate non-renewable resource. Yeah. And uh, these are the um, one of the other apples I strongly recommend. This is Kids Orange Red, and these are falling. And you've been picking some of these, haven't you, Julia? Yeah. The, yeah. The kids' orange reds. Some of the small ones on the ground were actually some late thinning that we did because the branches are breaking on these. That's right, and we have broken a few branches, have, yeah. regrettably. These have done very well this year, this year and uh, these, these go very well. These, are, these were very popular, weren't they, at Winchester yesterday when people were having a chance to taste them. It's interesting ones at this end. Not... That's the classic one with this streaking of russet coming out, of, out from the yeah. stalk. But I found a lot of them this year haven't got so much russet because of the weather hmm. conditions, I think. I like the russeting on these. I do. It, 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 it was the apple that was going to replace A lot of them look more like a gala, don't they? Maybe. This was going to replace cox. It's got a lot of the flavour. It's much easier to grow, heavier cropper. But um, the public didn't like the russeting, did they? Uh, but it we like it. It doesn't have such a good flavour as cox. It's got the light floral overtones. Yeah. It hasn't got that deep spice in it. Yeah, but when did you last eat a true cox? Well, the nearest I got to it was our own queen cox. Yeah. When you buy coxes orange pippin yeah. from a big commercial orchard, they are huge. So they've been well pumped up with irrigation and lots of nitrogen and picked early. Because there's no doubt. Any flavour. There's no doubt that you can get heavier uh, crops well, from a, a fully the, supported modern sort of factory yeah, orchard yeah. system. Um, and yeah, we don't a natural cox grown in this, in this orchard would only be about this size, wouldn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't get anything like the crops we've got here. No. Um, cox is a hard apple to grow. <laughs> a lot of people think it is the finest of all flavours. Um, this, uh, this broke off under the weight. Um, we left it and it's ripening. These, uh, yeah, there's enough goodness going down through the intact bark. Also, the leaves are alive. So that these are still going to mature, and then when we pick that crop, we can prune those. we yeah, difficult judgment call here. Um, what we thought we might, might because that split is going down so deep, what we might, and this is taking that out, it's the tree so imbalanced, unbalanced. Um, there's a couple of radical decisions we could make. One thing, I could slice this clean off and file it down, slice it down so it sheds rain. Paint this over saw this off here and let it send some new shoots up from there. That's one way of doing it. No. Another way, you don't think so? No. I'm saying it's possible. I'm not saying it's necessarily I think already water plan. will have been penetrating here. I think that's got to be taken off yeah. down. By the time you and do like that... I say, then the whole tree is unbalanced. I think we need to take those branches off as well. What you're saying is saw the tree off Dismember about the there. tree yeah. with one nice clean cut and then the water shoots that arise from that to select the best one to be a new main leader. We've Obviously done that we before successfully we haven't we on more than one occasion not just that big Bramley but on a we've few a others. Golden that we've done that too. Yeah and a Kingston Black yeah. it worked for that manoeuvre a brutal right. manoeuvre but it, it worked. Sends up massive new shoots and it'll replace itself in about three years. Yeah this is a good late keeping apple this is Sturma Pippin but this year We've had a very, very poor crop from it. I'm not sure why. Um, I think it cropped itself too heavily last year and so it didn't set much this spring, which was a shame because they would have ripened nicely this year. Okay, and finally, here's the um, uh, 
Lord Lambourne. You're saying that some of these are so deeply red, they're almost black. Yeah, it's almost got that sort of black crimson stripe to it. They, I've never seen them quite so high. These have cropped this. very heavy, haven't they? And these were selling very well at Winchester, weren't they, yesterday? Uh, off, uh, but Sancho. you do really need to treat these like an early apple. Well, that's what them. we find in our soil. That isn't what's no, true that's everywhere. That's what we find. These are supposed to be an October, November apple. We find they are a September apple. I, I picked them through September. In fact, this year we started picking them mid August because it was early. Yeah. And I picked them fresh for market each week. And the ones that have been stored, they go a little bit softer and a very strong vinous flavour, yeah. which isn't very attractive develops. But they're nice fresh off the tree with that yeah. zingy juiciness. This is it. You've got to adapt or you've got to learn what a tree is teaching you in your microenvironment, in your soil, uh, in your conditions, and really from happened. year to year. We saw another grower from Hampshire selling Lord Nambourne yesterday, and ours are this dark Dark red colour. Yeah, battery's just about to go. And theirs, yeah. well, they were, they were more green than this stemma, weren't they? This is another grower a bit further north. Yeah, than their us. Lord Lambourne were, were just green with a few. They weren't the colour that we've uh, been able to achieve. Also, we've uh, planted these e e trees are now widely spaced, which allows more air and light and a better root run, better water. Um, less productivity per acre, yeah, um, but uh, again, a great backyard as a uh, tree. Anyway, so from uh, our sunlit orchard in late September, and you won't normally get Lord Lambourne as uh, brilliantly coloured as this, it's a quite amazing year. And I've, I've emailed my mate Jez to come and pick these up to put in his hard cider.